Hey gang, I'm in Oak Brook, Illinois today, just west of Chicago, maybe 20 miles, and I'm at the Peabody Estate, Mays Lake. Really kind of a spooky story here. And I'm standing near the mansion where the family resided back in the day. Now, if you grew up in this area, and by the way, by the way, let me just do quickly first do a shout out to Jacqueline Hartman, who is not called Jacqueline Hartman anymore. She is now Jacqueline Lillianstrom. She married some Swede. Guy like guy like me, a Swedish guy. Good for you. Congratulations, Jacqueline. But anyway, she's been bu bugging me <laughs> to do this episode. And uh, finally uh, thought it would be a good time to do it now, Halloween week, because this is kind of a spooky story. If you grew up here in the Oak Brook area and all this whole surrounding area, this place was legend because the kids would come out here at night and sneak in here. Now there were Franciscan monks. They had bought this place and they would be out patrolling. And the idea was, and there's the mansion over there, Tudor style mansion, 39 rooms. And what they were after was to go in the woods at, well, back in like this location right here, there's a swamp down there. And it was said that the body of Francis Peabody, the tycoon, if you will, was buried in the woods right down there. And if you could find it, you could find his glass covered coffin. You might be able to find the gold that was, that was buried with him. And then they say that many kids were caught teenagers at night the monks would get you no matter what and they'd make you kneel on rice or broomsticks or if they were nice they'd call the police and only if you repented for your sin would you be let go <laughs> well it's quite a legend but it has some very interesting history here here you see this chapel that I believe may have been a mausoleum in memory and it may have been it may have been the mausoleum where Francis Peabody was buried initially but he he died in these woods here I'll tell you the story as we will kind of tour around here and look around so he was born here in Chicago in July of 1859 in the family home. They lived on Russian Erie Streets right downtown. And his father, Francis, his name was also Francis, he was an attorney and he had just settled. He had just settled from, he came from Maine two years earlier. And you know what, as I tell the story, let's check out this. We'll just kind of walk around this chapel. It is, it is really amazing. Too bad we can't get in there. Well, Francis went to Yale. He graduated from Yale in 1881. He came back to Chicago here. As he worked as a messenger boy for a trust company. And then he became interested in the coal business. And he was an entrepreneur right by the, right at the start. So by 1894, to make a long story short, he had grown his business to over $10 million of gross sales. He married May Aunt Henderson on November 23rd of 1887. They had two children, Jack and May. Mrs. Peabody died of typhoid fever, 1906. She was in France, in Nice, France, with a girlfriend. And it was only a week after she got the disease that she died. It was, well, we all know about typhoid. Boy, that was bad stuff. No cures, no antibiotics. But anyway, her daughter, 
May was 15, her son Jack was 18 at the time. They were pretty devastated. They were at their boarding schools when they got the news. 1908, Francis here, Peabody met Marion Bryant. He was on a trip in Europe, married her in 1909, didn't waste much time. So not only was Francis a big time tycoon entrepreneur, but he was also a sportsman. He was very active in politics. He was very well known. He was involved in a lot of humanitarian causes around the world. And it was in 1919 here that he really focused on building his, his estate here. And again, we, we took a look at that built the Tudor Mansion, which he was totally focused on. At the time, it cost $750,000. And at one time here, there were 60 buildings. It was quite an operation of stables and... They were doing hunts, fox hunts here. They were called drag hunts. And it wasn't the type of thing where you know, they would actually do the fox hunt. These drag hunts, they would take the, the, the carcass or the skin of the fox and they drag it through the woods, kind of like a mock hunt. You know, a gentleman's, gentleman's game. And it was on one of those hunts where he lost his life. Basically had a massive heart attack. And, he, you know, he, he went missing and they were looking for him, and then one of the supervisors or superintendents found him next to a tree. His horse was standing right next to him, his loyal horse. He was dead. He had no idea at the time he had heart disease. They didn't have CAT scans in those days, you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. It was the silent, deadly killer. Well, the family did not wish to reside here anymore. They, the memories were, you know, they had lots of good memories, but all you are, you're just reminded of, you know, death of dad. So they left this place and it is then that they sold the property to the Franciscan province of the Sacred Heart, Orders of Friars Minor. 1924. Now this mausoleum that we see here, or chapel, I say mausoleum because people say, oh, it was a mausoleum. This is where he was buried after the woods. But the, the, the monks, the friars actually, the, it worked with the family, I believe. It was after they had sold it to build this and as you look down I'm just seeing hundreds of names and the bricks I'm not sure these are probably the contributors because I know they rely on donations here let's take a look at this and I'll tell you a quick overview they commissioned the friars to build this as a monument to Francis and it would be a replica of the chapel in Assisi, Italy, which takes its name from the little portion of land where St. Francis of Assisi received his call to serve the poor. And you can see the, if you look above the door, it looks like the artwork is all out of Little tiny ceramic tiles, wow. See if I can get you a close up of this. This is just amazing. I will zoom right in on this and you can see the tile work. It's just incredible. And I'll pan a little here. 
So yeah, they had this done as a for Francis. And there are the Franciscan monks. They are the ones who would be waiting. <laughs> they would be waiting to get those teenagers. And if you were here at night in Oak Brook, those were the monks that would get you. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go to the cemetery right now and pay our respects because Francis is actually buried at Queen of Heaven. So let's go over there and find his grave and pay our respects. We're at Queen of Heaven Cemetery now, and it is by no coincidence, no small coincidence, that we're at the Franciscan Friars Monument, where all the friars are buried, and this is where Francis is interred, among the friars, among the brothers. And you can see this is the latest internment here. And they're basically right down the line, 2021, and then the second one, 2020, 2017, 16, and right down the line. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for the first one, or the earliest one because they're all in order, so it should be pretty easy to find Francis. So we've got, uh, what do we got here? 1974, we've got a ways to go. There are probably 200 graves here. Let's see what we've got here. 56. All right, we're going the right direction. Oh, here he is, right here. 1922. Francis Peabody, and you can see, you can see the cross, the Franciscan cross that all the brothers have here. There's also another Peabody grave here that I see. 1888, this has to be his son, to 1946, hard to say, we'll have to check, check the ancestry there. Interesting, just two family members here. Well, I guess only men can be buried here, only the brothers, right? So, anyway. Francis Peabody, rest in peace. And listen, if you want to go looking for the gold or the glass coffin, don't do it. Don't go over there unless you just want to see and tour. Have a great day. Stay safe, everybody. Ah! <laughs>